Action! <laughs> Alright, today we're going to learn how to solve quadratic functions by factoring. No so, no. yesterday we already covered how to solve these by finding a square root. So now we're going to solve by factoring. Before we get into that, I have to show you or remind you of what the zero product property is. You guys remember what that was? That says if we take two numbers and multiply them, and the answer is zero, then one of those numbers has to be zero. Zero. So you do remember. Very good. No, but it's just common sense. You would think so, but sometimes students tend to miss that. So if we take two numbers and multiply them and the result is zero, then that tells us A is zero or B is zero. But one of them has to be zero. So we're going to use that property today. So if we multiply x times x minus 3 and get 0, then I need you to see that we're multiplying two numbers here. We're multiplying the number x times the number x minus 3, and we get 0. So from the zero product property, what do we know? That one of the x's is equal x to zero. could be zero, right? This number is zero. Or x minus 3 is zero. And if you solve this, then we have our solution. There we go. Mr. x would be either zero or three. If you put a zero here and then multiply it, you would still get zero. Because zero times, put zero there, what do you get? Zero. Zero. You get negative three, right? If you put zero and subtract three, this number is negative three, this is zero. Zero times negative three is still zero. zero. So one of the answers is zero. What happens if you put the three right there? It's still zero, because three minus zero. three is zero. That's right. Three minus three is zero, and if you put three here, it's going to be zero. So they're both solutions. So the zero product property says, hey, multiply this, multiply this, and you get zero, then one of them has to be zero. So there's our two answers. Okay. Questions? Then you guys... Tell me, what would we do on this example? Yeah, what, do you know? what if we had 3x minus 4 and x plus 1 equal to 0? First thing you need to see is that we are just multiplying two numbers. This number times this number equals 0. So that tells us one of them is zero. One of them is zero. So 3x minus 4 is zero. Or x plus 1. x plus 1 is zero. So this number has to be zero because we're multiplying, right? Or this number has to be zero. Go ahead and solve both of those. I got negative 1 and 4 over 3. I got that too. You're very good on that? Yeah. Questions? And then some of you who are a little better at algebra than others, maybe, a little more practice. The shortcut I tell myself is just look at this factor and ask yourself what makes this 0. What number could I put in here to make this 0? Negative 1, because negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Negative 1. And then how can we make this 0? Well, we know that 4 take away 4 is 0. But I have a 3 here, so it's going to have to be 4 divided by 3. 4 divided by 3. If you plug that in, the 3 is what divide. 4 minus 4 is 0. So you can kind of do them in your head. It's, 
the opposite of that divided by that. So what's the opposite of negative 4? 4. Positive 4 divided by 3. What's the opposite of positive 1? Negative. Divided by 1 is still negative 1. Okay. That's one way to think of it. So these were already factored for us. But the title of the note said we have to know how to do it by factoring. So let's practice one that we need to factor. So x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. So just like we've been practicing, this was from chapter 8, we need to factor that. So how are we going to factor that? Right? We do 1 times negative 10. Negative 10, right? What goes here? Negative 3. Negative 3, good. Coming back a little bit. What two numbers would work? When we multiply is negative 10, but when we add is negative 3. So 5 and 2. Negative 5 and 2. And the 5 has to be negative, that's correct. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative, negative three. 3. And negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. And then from there, we simply divide by the 1, right? And we would get x minus uh, 5. Minus one. x plus 2. X plus 2. And again, from the zero product property, this times this is zero, so this could be zero. So x would equal what? Five minutes. X would equal five. five. And from here, negative two. Right? That's what I got too. Remember, you could think in your head, what makes this factor a zero. What value of x? Negative two. Because negative two plus two is zero. And what makes this a zero? Positive five. Five minus five will give me a zero. And if you can't do that, don't panic. You can always come over here and do this. And then we add the five. Track the two, so you still get the answer. Okay. Now, for those of you who know shortcuts, this is why I teach you to divide this way. See how we got negative five here? What's the opposite of negative five? Positive five. Positive five. See how we got a two here? What's the opposite of positive two? Negative two. So we didn't even have to write the factors. We could have gone straight to the answer. Okay. Good. Let's try another one. What about that one? There's a couple things in here to look for that kind of tell you what we need to do. First thing, the degree. The degree is 2, so it's quadratic. So we're going to say, hey, we could probably factor it. So we know when we solve by factoring, we use the zero product property. So we know it has to equal what? Zero. zero. This doesn't equal zero right now. It equals negative 5. So how can I make it equal zero? You already know. Add 5. <laughs> So we have 3x squared plus 16x plus 5 equals 0. And then we factor that. So if we're going to factor that, what do we need to do next? You make your x, that's right. So 3 times 5? 15. 15. Bring the 16 down. What works? 15 and 1. 15 and 1. Very good. And then we have to do what? Divide 
by 3. By A. We divide by A. In this case, it's 3. And then reduce if you can. This one does reduce. Very good. And then the shortcut. This is a 5, so the opposite of 5 is negative 5. And that's a 1 third, so the opposite is negative 1 third. Negative 1 third. Done. And of course we could write the factor and then solve it from there you get the same answer. Questions up to there? Alright. And one last example. equals 5x. Again, there's something in this equation, this equation because there's an equal sign, equal. that tells us it's quadratic. quadratic. How do we know it's quadratic? It's got two in the corner. Because of the two, right? The degree is two. Good. So when it's quadratic, one technique is to what? Factor. Factor. And we know when we factor, we use the zero product property, which says this has to equal zero. zero. So how do we make this equal zero? Minus 5x. Minus 5x. Subtract the 5x. So we have x squared minus 5x equals zero. And then I know if some of you are going to raise your hand and say, whoa, wait a minute. We only have two terms, not three. So how are we going to factor this one? If anything, you should know, Mr. I do know, but I'm hoping you would remember. <laughs> GCF. GCF. What do they have in common? X. So factor out the X. And now it's like the first example I gave you. So look at your notes. How did we do this first one? X would equal? Zero. 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 And? X minus five. Positive. Positive 5. So you're right, x minus 5 would equal 0. So we have x equals 0, x minus 5 equals 0, add the 5. So we get 0 and 5. And that's it. Very easy. So you're going to have to remember the techniques we learned in Chapter 8, where we factor and sometimes we use the GCF. Okay? Very good.